Good. Well, welcome. It's lovely to have you all here. This is a very strange thing, but I was chuffed how well last week's went. Thank you, everybody who emailed and made nice comments. I meant to get back to all of you, but that just didn't happen last week, but it was appreciated. I think last week we had 44 screens and some of them were being watched by two or three people. So we must have had about 60 or 70 on Zoom. Then the video version of it, which Matt played around with in the afternoon, went on YouTube and another 45 people have watched that during the course of the week. So quite amazing what the technology can do, isn't it? Um, basically, housekeeping notes. We've muted you all. We'll take some photos off when we start um, and then we'll put you all back at some point. Sarah's going to read to us, so hopefully we'll find Sarah when we get to that bit. As normal, if it's involved, why don't you say it together? Matt and I will say it between us. We won't hear you, but it will be lovely if you say it and share it yourself. A reminder that you are being recorded. Now, when we put this on YouTube, we actually took everybody's faces off so you can't be seen. But if you are worried about that, you might want to turn your camera off. Um, and you can't have a church service without a collection. So I'll remind you, there's two yellow buttons at the bottom there. Thank you very much indeed. What we will do, we will continue to do Zoom at 11.30 every Sunday. And we also had services this morning. I had 30 people over at St Matthews and that went well. And I assume St Edmunds did too. I should have asked someone who was there and they could have told me. So my friends, welcome to worship. Come on screen, move on. No, why isn't my screen moving on? Okay, the PowerPoint's decided it doesn't want to move on. You need so to I'm navigate back to the PowerPoint, to... Peter, if you're still in Zoom from unmuting. Right, okay. I thought I was in PowerPoint, so how do I get out of you? Can I put you on? Whoa, I'm getting confused here, Matt. Because at the moment I can, I can see the screen, but of course it's not changing. So how do I get out of this to get back to the screen? Try an arrow key. Try an arrow key. Uh, yes, there we are. Good. Now, I think that will work. Yes, right. We'll see what happens. We love technology. Okay, my friends. So here we are, lighting the advent ring. So this week we got Lindsay and Adam and Barney in to come and light it for us. So let's see if this works. Come across. And can you blow that one out? So shall we pray yes. together? God, our Father, you spoke to the prophets of old of a saviour who would bring peace. You helped them to spread the joyful message of his coming kingdom. Help us as we prepare to celebrate his birth, to share with those around us the good news of your power and love. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the light who is coming into the world. Amen. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought and word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbour as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly. Love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Two collects today. The first one is the Book of Common Prayer collect for Advent 2, and then the common worship one down the bottom there. Let's say them together. Blessed Lord, who has caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant that we may in such wise hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that by patience and comfort of thy holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which thou hast given us in our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, purify our hearts and minds, that when your Son, Jesus Christ, comes again as Judge and Saviour, we may be ready to receive him, who is our Lord and our God. Amen. And now Sarah's going to read to us the Old Testament lesson from Isaiah. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and write to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make it straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, shall the people are, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades. But the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength. O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings, lift it up. Do not fear, say the cities of Judah. Here is your God. See the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like the shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. This is the word of the Lord. Speed to God. Thanks, Sarah. This wasn't a hymn that I knew before I came to Alastry, but they sing it quite regularly at St Edmunds. It's by Bernard Fowle. And here it is sung for us. If you know it, sing it along. If you don't know it, listen to it. And as my dad always used to say, if you don't know it in verse one, you jolly well ought to by verse five. Longing for light, we wait in darkness. <laughs>
Sarah is going to read to us from Mark's Gospel. In the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark, for you, our Lord. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah. See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, claiming baptism of repentance of the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and not tie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lovely Sarah, thanks very much. In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. What a week it's been. Yet another what a week. Things worse. It was Friday evening, about 8.30 at night. David Briley, church warden at St Matthew, phones up. Just thought you ought to know there's a fire engine with blue flashing lights parked outside St Matthew's. It turns out a pipe had burst in the old boiler room under the church and he'd organised the fire brigade to come and pump it out. But I thought we've had fire, now we've got flood and I think the pig of locusts is probably coming down the road next week. It's not been easy for any of us, has it? There was a little bit of me that said the best thing we can do in this worship is to put on Comfort Ye My People from Handel's Messiah Sit quietly and listen to that for the next six minutes, and that'll probably do you far more good than a sermon of mine. If you want a recording of Comfort Ye, my people, I've put a lovely one linked into the service that's on the website. For music and laughter and love and being together, that is the comfort that we need. And our job this Advent is to continue to share the music, the laughter, the love, the togetherness, and we'll share it virtually if necessary. I told you back a few months ago that I had signed up to a course, the Reformation in 10 Books, a course from the University of York Continuing Education Department. So I spent the last 10 Monday evenings doing just that. We were taught by a lass called Dr. Francesca Sioni. She's just got her PhD in the poetry of George Herbert she looks about 12, a bit frightening really. Very clever lass, and she's taken us through some wonderful material. We started with the Bible, then the Book of Common Prayer. We ended with Milton's Paradise Lost, Lost, and we've had everything from Fox's Book of Martyrs, Christopher Marlowe, George Herbert, and the sheep produced by ballad singers who used to sing in the marketplace. Of course, the Reformation was an amazing time in human history, not just the religious and political upheavals, but also the technological upheaval, the invention of the printing press, the publishing of books, printing of Bible and prayer books. I'm so used to piles of books all over the vicarage floor. Can you imagine that the first time a printed book, a printed Bible, was brought into Alastry Vicarage. Can you imagine one of my predecessors showing the first book to his wife? Actually thinking about it, can you imagine the Reformation causing the first wife in the Vicarage in Alastry? No doubt there were some parishioners who shook their heads and thought that was a very bad idea. But you can imagine the people of Alastry learning to read. Perhaps my predecessor was one of those people who sat down, the children and the adults in the villages, and actually taught them what these lines on a page meant and opened the word to them so they could read it and understand it. 
five weeks ago on our course, we learned about a lady called Elizabeth Grimmerston. She was born Elizabeth Bay, born about 1563 in Gunton in Norfolk. There's no picture of her. So here's one of Gunton Railway Station, which is on the Norwich Sheringham line. I could find a photo of that. In 1584, Elizabeth married Christopher Grimmerston. He just received his Bachelor of Arts at Gonville and Keyes College in Cambridge. We know from the records of the college that Christopher remained there to get his master's degree, and then he became a fellow of the college. He was bursar in 1588. We have very little information about him and Elizabeth. One piece of writing says that Elizabeth found her mother extremely difficult. I'm not saying anything about that. And the other thing that's interesting is that Christopher, as a fellow of a Cambridge college, had to live in Cambridge and was not allowed to be mad. So apparently for eight years, they kept their marriage quiet, living apart so the college didn't know he'd got a wife somewhere in Norfolk. And you can imagine the strain that that must have brought to that relationship. Another source of the strain was that they had nine children, only one of whom, a son called Barney, survived. I don't think any of us can get our heads around the strain that that must have caused in their marriage, their relationship. I like the idea that she called her son Barney, which was her maiden name. I didn't know that Barney was a 16th century name. It's rather good, isn't it? During her life, Elizabeth wrote her thoughts, her advice and her guidance for her son. And after she died in 1603, her writings were published in London, published the following year in a book called Millennia Meditations and Memoriatives. And she wrote to her son with these words that are on the screen. My dearest son, there is nothing so strong as the force of love. There is no love so forcible as the love of an affectionate mother to her natural child. There is no mother can either more affectionately show her nature or more naturally manifest her affection than in advising her children out of her own experience to a so evil and inclining them to do that which is good. What a lovely way to start a book. She wasn't the only woman to produce something like this. Here's a book by Elizabeth Jocelyn, The Mother's Legacy to Her Unborn Child. This was printed in 1624. Of course, in those days, Every mother-to-be knew how dangerous it was to give birth, that she might not survive to hold her child. Elizabeth wrote to her thoughts and they were published. Another book here, The Mother's Blessing or The Godly Counsel of a Gentlewoman, not long since deceased, left behind for her children by Dorothy Lee. This was published in 1630. You can see that they put a verse from the Proverbs, my son, bear the instruction of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother. That's the good line for the verse, is it? It wasn't just women who published for their children. Sir Walter Raleigh also wrote a book. Sir Walter Raleigh's instructions to his son and to posterity. I like the idea of writing a book for posterity. I wonder how many people have read Walter Raleigh's instructions. Elizabeth wrote her miscellaneous meditations and memoriatives. The miscellaneous were poems, quotes, moral advice, meditations on what others had written. The meditations were scriptural, often with the book of Psalms as a basis, morning and evening prayers. Don't forget that in this new book of common prayer, you said morning and evening prayer. You read the Psalms every day. You got through all 150 psalms in the course of a month. So these words would have gone deep into her life. Memoriatives, a collection of moral sayings. The moral saying I liked best, and you'll remember that my official job title is clerk in holy orders. The saying, give a lazy clerk a lean fee. Lazy vicars? Dreadful. Wouldn't believe it. 
you imagine Elizabeth and the other people reading with a pen in their hand. You didn't just read, you read and took notes. Here are some notes made by another author. As you read, you wrote down to learn and to benefit from what you'd written. So when Thomas Cranmer wrote his collect, Blessed Lord, who's caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, art that we may in such wise hear, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that by patience and comfort of thy holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which thou hast given us in our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. When Thomas Cranmer, who was Archbishop of Canterbury from 1533 to 1555, before he was put to death in the reign of King Mary, when he put together the Book of Common Prayer, the first English prayer book, when he wrote the prayers and the collects for each Sunday, he would have had in mind when he wrote today's collect, read, mark, learn and inwardly digest. He would have thought of the Elizabeth Grimmerstons of this world, the men and women who, as they read, made notes, thought about what they were doing, took the scriptures deep into their lives. This Christmas, as every Christmas, we talk about the word of God. Isaiah the prophet speaks God's word to us. He talks comfort, glory, that the word of the Lord endures forever. He uses that lovely image of the shepherd. When John the Baptist came, he takes the words of Isaiah and points to Jesus. He is the word of God. Read, mark, learn and inwardly digest. Not just the words on a page or the images on a screen, but the Messiah himself. Our Christmas experience may be different this year, but our experience of Christ needs to be as real as ever. This is good news. And as we do every year, we rejoice in the good news. We take it in ourselves and we share it with others. Amen. So let's say the creed together. We believe in one God, Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit, the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who's spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So let's spend some time in prayer. Let's pray. From the very beginning was your word. Which spoke this world into being. Your word. Which thunders from the skies. Your word. Which flows like mountain streams. Your word. Which whispers in morning breeze. Your word. Revealed through kings and prophets. Your word. Revealed through angels' praise. Your word. Revealed in humble service. Your word. Revealed through a tiny child. Your word. Alive from the beginning of all things and to eternity. Lord, we stand with your word and ask you your blessing. Help us on our continuing journey as we seek to be your people. 
Help us to hold on to your word in these dark and difficult times. We pray especially for our near neighbours at Mackworth. We cannot imagine what it must be like to see your beloved church building burnt down. We pray for Jacqueline, their vicar, for the wardens, congregation and community, for the fire service, police, and all those involved in the difficult decisions that have got to be made. We pray for us all as we journey through Advent, as we prepare for the coming of your kingdom, as we celebrate Christmas together. We know, Lord, that this will be a different year, but your word is not defeated by COVID or by fire. May we not be defeated either. Maranatha. Come, Lord Jesus. We pray for our world. It feels world of darkness, confusion and chaos. But we know your light is brighter than all the darkness. We pray for our government, the opposition and all in authority. For our relationship with Europe and today's negotiations. For national and local government. For those leading industry, education, the health service, all the aspects of our life. For wisdom, determination and the sense to work together. Maranatha. Come. Lord Jesus. We pray for our schools as term comes to an end, for teachers and staff when they get a rest and a holiday, for families trying to juggle work and childcare, for our young people. We think of our children, perhaps coping better with all this than many of us are. We think of our teenagers growing up in this frightening world. We pray for our students, those who've had an awful time at university and all the fears as they go home. We pray for those trying to find jobs and struggling at this time. Maranatha, come. Come, Lord Jesus. We pray for all those who are fighting COVID, for doctors, nurses, hospitals. We pray for those working long hours dressed in PPE, for those who are tired and frightened they can take no more, for those who are ill and their families, especially those who are unable to be with their loved ones. For all preparing vaccinations, we give thanks for the work of science and pray for the practicalities of distribution and immunisation. For people needing treatment for other illnesses, those whose treatment is delayed or cancelled, all who are frightened and confused. Maranatha. Come, Lord Jesus. We remember those who have died. At this time of festival, we remember those special to us. We ask for faith, for your healing power and for your love. Thank you for the journey we've been on together. Maranatha. Come, Lord Jesus. Your word is the light we see, a guide for our footsteps to where you are found. Your word is the strength we find when darkness threatens to overwhelm. Your word is the power we need to become servants of a heavenly king. Your word is the reason we live in the sure knowledge you are everything. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So now let's have a second hymn. This choir do it slightly more slowly than we do, especially up at St Edmunds if David was on the organ. But enjoy and sing along to Long Ago Prophets New. 
Son of righteousness shine upon you scatter the darkness from before your path and make you to ready to meet him when he comes in glory and the blessing of god almighty the father the son and the holy spirit be among you and remain with you always amen advent god we journey with you to bethlehem stable and a newborn king ears attuned to the song of angels eyes alert for bethlehem star Forgive us if on our journey we are distracted and weighed down by the things of this world. Keep our hearts aflame with the hope of Christmas and the promise of our Saviour. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Good. Thank you, everybody. Well, now we know why we have duty wardens sat at the back of church to sort out the door to anybody who arrives in the middle. My wife has many gifts, but dashing to the door like a young gazelle wasn't going to be one of it. We can always now test Matt's editing things as to whether he can take that out before he puts it on, on YouTube. Next week, we'll do Zoom morning prayer at 1130 We've also, we should have services in both churches, as you can see. But if you are going to go, do check first. We're also going next Sunday afternoon to do a Zoom Christingle with some of the kids from Alice Street. We've got a crowd of them who are keen. So we've got to go and get oranges and deliver Christingle at home packs. And then we can all make Christingles around dining room tables and see how many, I was going to say, how many houses we can set fire to. That joke's not funny at the moment, is it? And then we'll try and do a Christingle for the Dali Abbey ones the following week. And apparently quite a lot of Walter Evans want to join in. So that could be total chaos as well, couldn't it? But thank you, everybody, for being part of it. I hope it's been good. If you want to find out a little bit more, have a look at the stuff that's on the website.